everyone. Welcome back to Let's Talk About It with Jackie and Megan. Today, Jackie and I will be talking about our experience going to a Lutheran Good Friday service together over Easter weekend. We actually recorded this episode together and something happened with the audio and it was a total mess and there's no way you want to watch it. So we are re-recording this with our thoughts and talking about it. Yes. Uh, Before we begin, we went to a Lutheran, Missouri Synod Lutheran service. It was a Good Friday Tenebrae service. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there are other Good Friday services. Um, I think they had a different kind of service earlier in the day. So this is just the service that we went to and what we experienced. It is by no means every single Lutheran service out there or representative of all of them. Yeah, definitely not. But it's the only one I've been to. And and I do also know that Tenebrae is something that is across traditions and denominations. It's not just a Lutheran thing, although that was the first time I had been to a Tenebrae service. So I'd never been to one before I'd heard of it. Um, I understood the concept of it. And essentially the main concept of Tenebrae, I think, or element of it is there's seven candles. And after each prayer, they extinguish a candle. So at the end, you're left in darkness. Um, so <clears throat> I think... It can be very powerful. Um, That was my one, our only Megan and I both. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I'd only been to like Maundy Thursday or Holy Thursday Tenebrae services. Oh, right. Yeah. So this was new for both of us because neither Mm -hmm. of us had been to a Good Friday Tenebrae service. No. Mm -mm. Yeah. My, I think I feel like my Good Friday service, which maybe the other Lutheran service or other Lutheran services are more similar. But I feel like, yeah, the Good Friday services I've been to are very different than this one. This was a specific type of one. So it was just, it was definitely different than my usual experience. Um, some fun things just as a Catholic walking in that I noticed was there were no kneelers. And that was a little like, it looked very similar to the church. So when I just, if I would just sitting there, you just told me like, oh, you're in a Catholic church, I would believe it. It had a very similar setup with the pews and everything. Um, the overall church building looked like it could be a Catholic church. Um, some of the decor was different. I didn't see it, but Megan clarified for me that there was a cross that had Jesus on it, like actually crucified on the cross. But I would say like the main cross did not have Jesus, the biggest one on it, which was different for me. Um, and then the stained glass windows around, um, where the pews were. So on like the lowest level of the walls around the pews were different than what I would be used to for in Catholic churches. It can be stained glass, but it's always the, um, stations of the cross that are there. And I don't think that's what the stained glass was in the Lutheran church. I think you were right that it was gospel scenes, Megan. I'd have to go back and look, but I was trying to figure it out. And also the type of art and the stained glass was different than what I'm used to seeing so Mm -hmm. yeah it was it was gospel stories I looked closer later (laughs) okay (laughs) so it was was like Jesus feeding the 5,000 or Jesus walking in water or the Sermon on the Mount it was like those different like scenes um like kind of surrounding the the building in the bottom so yeah, yeah that I think is different um I think too obviously like as a Protestant going into like a Catholic church there's much more artwork with like including Mary or saints right. or like apostles. Right. Um, you'll have like Peter or Paul, like artwork around that. Um, whereas at least in this Lutheran church, that was not the case. It was like the gospel stories or Jesus, or they had like flags with different like symbols for the sacraments um, mm-hmm. or like themed for Easter weekend, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um so I, I think for like my perspective, that would be a difference I noted. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you're sitting, if you were just sitting there, you walked in and you didn't notice the small differences, it could feel like you're sitting in a Catholic church, but um, of course I was looking for differences and <laughs> um, the biggest thing was the kneeler. Anyone that would walk in that's used to a Catholic church would be like, what, what do I do? Where's the kneeler? Like I, I can't kneel down. So just overall in the service, that was the biggest difference for me being Catholic. There's so much movement and like incorporating the body and different movements, meaning different things in the service that that was very different for me. It was like weird too. We, there were some points that we stood up, but it was maybe only a, a few times in the service where you would stand. Maybe I think it might, might've only been twice. So the fact that I just sat there the whole time, I was like, oh, <laughs> 
it was a little, it was different. Um, Mm -hmm. But the overall, like there being a liturgy and being an order to things that felt very familiar to me, like the priest getting up and talking and then being singing and then a prayer and then just a repetition. That's something that I'm very much used to. So that felt normal to me. Um, The responses were a little different um, as expected, but that was something for me to get used to, to not have like the Catholic response at the end of a reading or at the beginning of a reading. Mm um but I do think that they overall went through more similar parts of the Bible in Good Friday that we would normally focus on as well in a Good Friday service it's the Catholic Good Friday service is much longer especially the church that I would go to here in Chicago they would sing the entire passion um I think starting with them I think in the garden them coming and then Judas betraying Jesus and then all the way up until his crucifixion and being taken off the cross and being killed. So it's like sung through the whole thing. And there's like responses and the, 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 a congregation speaks some of it and there's a narrator and then the priest is reading Jesus's lines and it's just a whole, and it's sung. So, (laughs) um, it was much shorter. It was, but it was the same. It focused on the same, obviously parts of the Bible, like Jesus being portrayed, betrayed and crucified. So Mm-hmm. yeah i had been to like a, a high presbyterian good friday mm-hmm. service that was like the same way where it's singing through the different i forget like what exactly that service is called mm-hmm. there's a name for it like this was a tenebrae and i forget what that style is called but mm-hmm. yeah there's like di- like people have different roles it's like oh this person is singing peter and this yeah. person is singing, so. yeah like the the soldiers like things like that um so yeah that was definitely different um yeah I was curious because I had been to Thursday tenebrae services and they would typically walk through like the last supper the institution of communion the washing of feet and then it would go into the garden and it would Mm -hmm. end with Jesus's arrest and Mm -hmm. that's where like Thursday would end and then Friday would pick up with his trial and then crucifix uh uh, Peter's denial and then the crucifixion and burial and then that's where friday would end so it was like a little different for me them starting in the garden with Mm -hmm. the betrayal and arrest because that's typically i'm curious like what their thursday ended with then yeah ours it was just the institution of the eucharist and the feet the last supper and washing of the feet um because they do wash you don't go into the garden at all on thursday i don't think so i think that's where we pick up on good friday so the main the holy thursday is really focused on and it's an actual mass where we would they consecrate the eucharist and all of that and we are like leading into that and then good friday another difference is at this service they did not have any kind of receiving of communion at the lutheran church we at the catholic church a good friday service it's not a mass because we're focused on like the death of christ and we're not like celebrating the mass which includes you know like celebrating his resurrection um is yeah we, they don't actually consecrate the eucharist but they have previous hosts that have been consecrated so you, we still receive communion at the good friday service but it's not the same as a mass um yeah and that starts with i'm pretty sure with the betrayal and then him standing before um pilot and th- and then yeah, being say who are you the, you say you're the king of the jews jesus is so sassy yeah. and that. i was good you say i am I'm like, okay <laughs> <I know>. um, <laughs> so messy yeah <laughs> yeah i know so for high protestant churches that i visited they usually do communion on thursday and then not on friday because friday mm. is when jesus is being crucified right low church protestant services i've been to typically don't have a thursday service they only have a good friday and an easter and so they have communion on good friday so Mm. a little difference there yeah okay yeah i think every service there's like a very in the catholic world there's a set for each of them but what they might focus on can be different so something i found that was similar like a theme throughout which i was like oh is god trying to tell me something was so i went to catholic service or catholic mass for holy thursday before i came to wisconsin and then we went to the lutheran service for good friday but both of them were talking about forgiveness (laughs) Because like washing of the feet, it was talking about how like thinking about washing the feet of your enemies 
like as Jesus washed the feet of um of his disciples, so those that followed him, but still Peter, who would, you know, betray him and we're all sinners. And Judas who would betray him and yeah, Peter yeah. Would deny him. Yes. So like, yeah, his apostles, but people that were gonna betray him and Peter who ultimately still followed him, but did betray him as well, um, deny him. So um, talking about washing the feet of our enemies. And that was a theme that they carried. I remember them talking about on Good Friday was also forgiveness. Um, I think that's, mm-hmm. that is just a huge theme of obviously the crucifixion was Jesus forgiving our sins. Um, so there were just, there obviously, because we're talking about the same subject, there were a lot of similar themes, just the overall way that it looked and felt was different. Um, I did one thing that really stuck out to me Um, and I think I mentioned this the last time that we tried to record this was they focused on that moment between Jesus when there's John, the beloved and Mary, and he's saying like, Mary, this is your son and John, but Mary, this is your mother. And in like a Catholic context, I've never heard that really emphasized or talked about in the Holy Thursday or Good Friday services. Like, I think it's part of the passion, but it's not really focused on. And that's because in a Catholic context, that's like the meaning of that, the main, not the main meaning, but a big meaning emphasized for us is we feel like that's Jesus instituting Mary as like the mother of all Christians. And so that ties into our Mariology and our view of Mary and like praying for Mary's intercession. Um, So the explanation at the Lutheran church, which I don't think was wrong. I think that passages have different meanings as well, like multiple meanings, um, was just that that was Jesus really caring for his um, loved ones that he was leaving behind he didn't leave them behind but like making sure they were taken care of um which was like a different meaning i'd ever heard but that just stuck out to me because i'd never heard that really talked about in a protestant context um but megan that's like the only explanation yeah i'd only heard it talked about that way so it would typically it would come up for good friday and it was always that like wow even at jesus's like most painful terrible moment of being crucified and like taking on the sins of the entire world he's like focusing on making sure his mother is cared for while he's gone and things Mm -hmm. like that so i remember it wasn't until i like moved to chicago and was working at a catholic organization that someone brought up that passage in reference to mariology and i was like what (laughs) i've never heard that (laughs) Yeah, I appreciated that because I think even if I do think there's, I think taking multiple meanings to a passage and that that's definitely a part of it too, of Jesus caring about us and his mother and um, yeah, but that just stuck out to me. I was like, oh, I've never really heard that focused on. It's just the the funny like little things that you would notice. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm trying to think another thing is I would wonder if Lutherans and their different services do veneration of the cross that's like a big focus um at the good friday service for catholics is they just a wooden cross like bare cross jesus is not on it but we go up and we touch or kiss or kneel before it to venerate the cross and they're usually playing were you there i think that's one of the songs that they play which they did play at the lutheran service i was like a classic thank you i saw it on the sheet i was like oh and it's so funny in the car after everyone mentioned we're like thank god they played that (laughs) that is just i think that's a classic we all can agree (laughs) yeah honestly so they did play that so i would be interested if there's any lutherans if that's something that lutherans do i would not be surprised if not since veneration of things is more of a catholic thing but i do feel like veneration of the cross on good friday is like very specifically different and distinct from Mm -hmm. veneration of other images and things so i could see it being something that potentially other christian denominations would do so i'm just would be interested yeah i i've never been to a protestant service that did something like that i would say the closest would be i've been to like protestant good friday services or like retreats mm-hmm. where um you like go up to the cross like while they're playing music or praying and you like write down a sheet of paper either like like a shame you have or a sin mm-hmm. and you like pin it onto the cross and then afterwards they like burn the pieces of paper um so i've been to stuff like that but i've never been to a protestant service like where they were venerating the cross so Mm -hmm. yeah i'm curious yeah that's something that is in a service only on good friday yeah and that's always something that's always was very powerful for me um the good friday service just 
historically for me is my favorite service. I feel like you feel the same, Megan. It just feels mm-hmm. like that's when we're really focusing on what Jesus has done for us and where you're actually, I don't know, I feel just like very impacted by Good Friday. Um, so yeah, and that was one part of it that's always powerful for me. So I would be interested if that's just a Catholic thing. I know we have some Lutherans yeah. that watch, so let me know. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm trying- Other little small differences I remember we talked about last time was uh, we recited the Apostles' Creed, which I think typically in Catholic Masses, they do the Nicene Creed. It's not that they don't ever do the Nicene Creed in Lutheran services, because I've been to ones that do. Um, But for this one, they did the Apostles' Creed. And they changed it to the Holy Christian Church instead of the Holy Catholic Church, which I would say a lot of churches even protestant ones keep catholic it's just with a lowercase c so mm-hmm. even i i was in like the back with our toddler so i didn't like see the pamphlet and so i just loudly said catholic um instead of christian but <laughs> that would be like a small little change everyone's that like was... uh, who's yeah that? excuse me <laughs> Who are you? yeah well, excuse yeah. me i was yeah i was in the pew and john uh, was next to me and i was you know like saying one holy cat and I got embarrassed. John, I think John wasn't paying attention. I was like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> Never mind. Because <laughs> I remember you saying like, oh, I and I've been to Protestant like services or yeah. C, where they still say Catholic. It just means universal um, versus like capital C Catholic church. So yeah, I was a little, and they, there's slightly different wording in the apostles creed, the way they say it versus how we say it and the Nicene creed. So and yeah, the Catholic mass probably we do a normally... translation thing. I, think I don't know it might that that's be. like a theological thing because I've heard so. different versions of it. Too. No, yeah, yeah, I think it's a translation thing. And we Catholics, we slightly changed a few words recently. There was like a big change in some of the language in the mass, including um, this was back when I was like a sophomore in high school. It's like when we started saying "in with your spirit" instead of "and also with you." That was like part of that change. And then there was some like more biblical language instituted around like specifically from the bible around the eucharistic prayers so that was a change that i remember and i appreciated but they like changed a little bit in the nicene creed i think it's always it's been a traditional like type of way of saying the nicene creed that make up a new one but they just changed the one that we say but people were tripping over that (laughs) over their words a lot so um, the priesters come out and they're like wait what's happening yeah for a while you would hear that. and also with you and you're like okay i see that you you only go to mass christmas and easter and you have no idea thankfully it's been you know over it's been decades now it feels like so people are starting to get it but yeah that's funny um yeah that was a difference and then the lord's prayer i knew it in my head that there's an additional end to the way that protestants say the our father and i knew that but when you're actually saying it, you know, I was still surprised when you kept going. So. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. They had a note in the bulletin that they were like, Oh, um, after the Lord's prayer, there'll be like a loud sound that symbolizes Jesus being buried or whatever. I forget the wording. I should try and look it up. But Jackie and I were like, what? A loud sound? Like, so we were like a little nervous about that. (laughs) And like really like try to prepare ourselves I so know. i know you said last time too it was like oh and the lord's prayer keeps going and you're like oh i was like all prepped for this loud sound which ended up just being like a symbol yeah clash, like nothing scary but that was kind of funny so i was like anxious for the end of the lord's prayer so then i just was used to what i was used to so i was like cringing waiting for it or like preparing myself and then they kept praying and yeah so yes I know. So one thing we noticed was, um, so in Tenebrae services I've been to in the past, once again, Tenebrae services are very focused on like light and sound. So you like you leave in silence and in the dark. Um, and so throughout the service, they're extinguishing candles. And in, in churches I'd been to before that did Tenebrae services, as they extinguish candles, they also dim like the church house lights so that the room is progressively getting darker. Because like a little candle up at the altar, it like doesn't really impact the light in the room. Um, and then when you leave, it's like dark. Um, whereas this church didn't like dim or turn off the lights at all. And I did feel like that took away from the effect. I agree. A little bit. Um, because yeah, it's like the little candles getting extinguished don't really impact or change the room. So mm-hmm. 
I don't know. It could have just literally been a safety thing because there are older people in the room and children. And children running yeah. around. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> so maybe they felt it was safer to not, which totally makes sense. Um, but yeah, even just dimming them a little, I feel like really would have added hell. to I agree. Like just totally a little service. bit. I agree. So that was one. Um, if you give it critique, <laughs> yeah. uh, something that wasn't theological at all, just like just the mood, the vibe. I'm like, um, yeah, yeah. the vibe a little better. <laughs> um, yeah, I did appreciate, and this is was similar, and I think this is probably for most Good Friday or Holy Thursday services is leaving in silence and be very solemn and respectful. Because after a normal Sunday mass or service, people are like, oh, you know, like chatting in the back, like you know. Um, but I love that because it's such a juxtaposition between that and then on Easter Sunday, where obviously like the church probably looks different. Like I assume in the Catholic church, they wait to put like, um, until like the vigil and then Easter, they wait to put out all the flowers and the decorations. So like you leave in this like more bare looking church and mm -hmm. silence and like sadness supposed to be reflecting on the crucifixion and him dying and descending into hell. And then it's such a juxtaposition to then when you come in on Easter and it's loud and bright and glorious and music. And um, yeah, I always appreciate that. So that was something that they did do as well at the Lutheran mm -hmm. service was they asked us to please leave in silence and be very respectful and solemn. And I do feel like most people did that. Obviously there were children, um, which they're going to do whatever they want. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but from the most part, I feel like people were pretty quiet leaving and mm -hmm. I, I like that. So. Yeah. And another difference I noted that I don't think this is like unique to Lutheranism, but just this church probably specifically was, mm -hmm. it was just the pastor getting up to like do the readings or the prayers. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> whereas in the past, most of the services I've been to, they have multiple people up there doing yes. the different portions, which I do yeah. feel like adds some variety. And I do like that. Um, so yeah, that was something I noticed. It was like, it was just the pastor. I don't know if it was just this specific church or if that is like a Lutheran, like, structure of service but um I would say another thing too another difference between like low church and high church protestant sort of emphases on good mm -hmm. friday is protestant churches I'd been to that were more low church when they do good friday there's like a big focus on like the passover and Jesus being the like the fulfillment of the passover lamb which I didn't feel like was like very much spoken about or an emphasis at this service yeah so I don't know for Catholics if that is the case or if that's more of like a Thursday thing or if that's not as much of a focus they talk about the Passover more on Thursday of like the holy okay yeah um there might be some I mean all of our services we talk about Jesus being the um like the layout yes. that's a part of us our normal language but focusing on the Passover from my memory, yeah, it's what they focus on more on Holy Thursday. Um, yeah, which I would, I wonder if they did at the Lutheran Church on Thursday, they focused on that more. I assume mm -hmm. probably. Um, that would have been interesting to see. I'm trying to think, I feel like because of the nature of the service, there wasn't much the priest said that I like theologically would have disagreed with. Just because Good Friday, there, I mean, we're all pretty much united like, on yeah, that we all what, think jesus died yeah, for us what's <laughs> going on there so i don't know if anything stuck out to you megan that you're like oh that would be different than catholics i don't remember anything like that um no um i know at one point he was emphasizing like real presence in communion which would be different yes. from like low church protestants right um they would probably feel comfortable with that whereas like for you you're like yeah um that's true that's true yeah I think that was something so, I, I was just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> got it. Thumbs up on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't think theologically it was, most, it's just, it's going through the passion story. You know, it's like, it's hard to find a yeah. whole lot we disagree with in there. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about forgiveness and like the crucifixion of Jesus forgiving our sins and sacrificing and dying for us. It's like, yeah, that's, this mm -hmm. is the core of Christianity. We all agree on this, you know? Um, so I felt like, I guess that is a good service to go to because 
there's not going to be much very that, ecumenical very ecumenical there was not a communion so service and it's like they have a closed communion table so we weren't like sitting back and there wasn't like a we didn't stand out that we weren't a part of that church for that service so mm-hmm. it was felt like okay just going sitting here and you were sitting most of the time so there wasn't much room for air and like standing up or kneeling or something like in the, at the wrong time um, which honestly at the Latin mass, I feel more out of place. I'm like, okay, up, down, you know? <laughs> so, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I thought it was good. I mean, you can't, I don't feel like you can go too wrong with Good Friday, as long as you're focusing on the crucifixion of Jesus. And I felt like the pastor had good messages, messaging about things. And he did like a little homily, which I was used to, especially the length of it, um, and then the rest, it was more focused on reading from the Bible and then specific prayers and singing and going through. If you know the Tenebrae service, I'm assuming it's similar structure for all of them. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was very friendly too. the pastor came to the back. And I think he realized we were new. Um, you guys had been there once before, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was very welcoming. He went up and talked to everybody, which I thought was really nice. Um that's where the Protestant side came out. I feel like, cause I don't feel like I see that in the Catholic That's churches right. often a priest. He was dressed in a way that I would think, Oh, he kind of looks like a priest, which is different than like low church Protestants, the ways he was dressed. Um, but yeah, I thought it was nice that he came out and talked to us. There weren't as many people. So maybe it was easier for him to do that. Um, we did it on Easter really too. Crowded. But what'd you say? On Easter, it was packed and he went to every row. Yeah. So I really liked that. Um, that's something yeah. I didn't point out last time, but that's something I really appreciated. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Protestant friendliness. Mm-hmm. Which we actually we also, also experienced that in that Greek Orthodox church that we went to, which yeah. I don't know if that's not common, from a priest, but, but from the congregants. That, yeah. Yeah. Which I just feel like my church and it could be just because it's so huge. Um, and it's a church in the city where there's always new people coming in and out and yeah. It's more of like, can be like a traveling church, like people. And it's so, so massive. I just know the priest, they do stand in the back and they do like by the doors and try to like say hi to people. And, but, and like, if someone comes up to them, but there's just too many people for them to go to every single row, like it's just too much. But, um, I would, yeah, my experience in the Catholic churches, they would stand by the back door as people walked out and shake their hands and say bye and have that kind of community. Um, but I just liked that before the service, he was out mm-hmm. talking to us so yeah past i don't know what his name was pastor do you remember megan decker okay i don't know but... i think it was pastor decker well if good. you're listening <laughs> yeah if you're listening somehow yeah <laughs> so. yeah um you know we have some lutherans that watch our channel so i'd be interested if that's different than the typical good friday lutheran service let us know yeah and they did have a service earlier in the day that we did not attend just timing wise it didn't work out so my assumption would be that that was probably the more traditional and then they had an evening tenebrae um but yeah in my experience i'd only done tenebrae for thursday so i actually really really liked the tenebrae format for good friday i liked that me too yeah so it's good. I would I need to go to an actual Lutheran Sunday service and then tell you guys about about my experience with that because like that would be different an actual like standard service. So yes, 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 yes. And then Jackie will become Protestant. <laughs> hmm. Right. That's all it takes. Right? right. Like Catholics just have to visit a different church. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all it takes for Protestants. It's just visit a Catholic church. Yeah. It's really just whatever church you go to. <laughs> You'll become that. I would say that Lutheran is pretty, would be much closer to me than a lot of other Protestant churches. So (laughs) I would feel more at home in a Lutheran church versus like a very low Protestant church. So yeah, probably not going to happen, but (laughs) that would be the shock. (laughs) That would would ruin the whole vibe of our podcast though. So yeah. So what we would, we'd keep it a about? secret yeah, <laughs> no one would know about, Megan <laughs> what would we talk about <laughs> well, yeah let us know and until next time 
keep talking about it.